Hello everyone, welcome to the first of our Rocky in Action webinar series. My name is Guilherme Hanauer and I am part of the Rocky DM technical team. Today we are going to make a quick presentation about conveyors and chutes and how can we use DEM simulations to improve this equipment and operating conditions. Let's start defining what are conveyors and chutes. Typical belt conveying systems are used to transport granular material and they can be defined as made of four parts. The first part highlighted here with the number one is called transfer chute. Here we can observe many interactions between the granular, ma between the granular material and the equipment as well as between the granular material and itself. The second part is the acceleration zone, which is where the material leaves the transfer chute and falls on the receiving conveyor, which accelerates the granular material. Next, the material is transported with a constant velocity and there are no major changes in its behavior. Finally, the granular material reaches the, transi the transition zone where it is discharged from the conveyor belt and then loaded into, a, into another transfer chute or other equipment. DEM simulations for transfer chutes are usually focused on the rightmost portion of this drawing. Now that we defined what are conveyors and chutes, we can talk about its industrial applications. These are equipment that are used to transport many types of granular material for from coarse grain to very fine powders. In fact, such types of equipment are used in almost all industries where granular material needs to be transported. Since this equipment can be seen in a wide range of industries, it makes sense that they have many different types and shapes. Still, all of them have the same main engineering objective, to ensure the material flow. Also, their goal is to allow for reductions in operational cost and increase processes reliability. And with Rocky, we can simulate many types of conveyors and chutes. In today's session, we are going to show how can we set up a DEM simulation and do some post-processing analysis in Rocky. We will begin importing the geometries of the transfer chute. Then we will set the belts motion configure material properties and materials interactions. Next, we create the particle group to be used and set the mass flow rate. Once the setup is done, we run the simulation. Then we will show how to color particles by certain properties like velocity. We will evaluate the amount of particles in the domain throughout the simulation, analyze how much material we have on each side of the receiving conveyor. And finally, we will create particles trajectories to understand the material flow. Here we have Rocky DM interface. And to begin a new project, we can simply click on this blank page and a new data tree appears. We can give this study a name. Let's call it transfer shoot. And we can also give a brief description for this problem, like the mass flow rate of it, the feed conveyor speed, and the simulation duration. Then we need to define the physics of the problem, like rolling resistance model and contact models. Once this is done, we can import our geometries and we can import multiple geometries at once. Before starting our simulation, we need to save this project, select the import unit that was used to create the drawing, and we can simply click and drag the geometries to visualize them. Once we import the geometries, we can change a few visualization options, like changing the transparency of our geometries. We can change the colors of the geometries, 
We can also change the background color and the font color. Everything that is selected in the data tree is highlighted with a bounding box. Next, we need to create our inlet surface, which is from where we are going to inject particles in the domain. Once we create the inlet, we need to position it. And here we positioned it close to the feed conveyor. We can change its orientation and size to have something that looks more like what we have in the real processes. And we can zoom in in this region to see our inlet surface. Once we do that, the next step is to define our motions. So we start creating a motion frame for our feed conveyor motion. This feed conveyor motion will be uh, positioned near the feed conveyor. We change its orientation so that we can give a direction for our motions. And we can set the velocity of this motion frame. Before starting the simulation, we can open a new motion preview window to visualize these motions that we are creating. And here we can see this coordinate axis, which is used to our feed conveyor motion. Now we are going to create another motion frame for our receiving conveyor motion. This receiving conveyor motion will be uh, put near the receiving conveyor geometry. And we are going to set the velocities in each of the directions here so that we have a resulting velocity pointing in the same direction as the geometry. Once we create the motion frames, we need to link these motion frames with the geometries that we will, have, we will receive these motions. So we do that for the feed conveyor and for the receiving conveyor. And to go back to our 3D view, we can simply enable the Windows window and go back to the 3D view that we created previously. Next, we define the material properties. In Rocky, we have three default materials, which we are going to use here. And I will change the material of the, of the belts that we have in this simulation. And here I am changing the materials interactions properties for the different pairs of materials that we have in this simulation. So I'm changing the friction factors, restitution coefficient, and if we have addition, we can change these addition properties in the same uh, place. Next, we create the particle group. In this case, we are going to use particles with the same size. All particles will have 70 millimeters and a rolling resistance of 0 0.28. Once we create our particles, we need to define the injection of these particles in the domain. So we are going to inject particles from the inlet surface and we are going to inject at 1000 tons per hour. Finally, we define the simulation duration the hardware that we want to use to run the simulation, and we can start our simulation. In this example, we already have some results, so let's skip to the results part. And let's do some post-processing. First, we can move the time bar to see particles flowing inside the transfer chute. We can change the particles visualization by certain properties. In this case, I'm showing particles colored by absolute translational velocity. We can see where particles are accumulating inside the chute. We can see how particles are flowing between the feed conveyor and the receiving conveyor. And since we see that we have some particles accumulated inside the transfer chute, we can 
uh, check how many particles we have uh, entering the simulation, leaving the simulation, and how many particles are accumulating in the simulation. If we plot the particle in count curve, we see that we have approximately, approximately the same number of particles entering the domain for every output, and particles start to leave the domain at about five seconds. So we see that we have particles uh, entering. We have almost 3,000 particles in the domain, and some particles are left inside the domain. So we can check how many particles we have, and we can also check uh, these values by particles mass if we want. Next, let's evaluate how many particles do we have on each side of the receiving conveyor. For that, I am creating one cube around the receiving conveyor. And, we, and in this region, let's split this cube in two using two planes. First, we will uh, separate this cube in two halves so that we can see how many particles do we have on each side of this uh, receiving conveyor. And we can duplicate this plane and change its normal so that it's oriented in, on the other side. Once we have these two planes defined, we can track this uh, the mass of particles on each side of this receiving conveyor. First, I created a curve for the particles mass on the right side, and now we have for the left side as well. We can see that there is an imbalance between both sides. This means that uh, probably a design change is needed so that we have a more balanced weight distribution on the receiving conveyor. And finally, we can create particle trajectories as well to see how particles are flowing inside the chute and uh, between the feed conveyor and the receiving conveyor. So these uh, particle trajectories can be uh, colored by certain properties as well. We can change the number of path lines that we have according to our needs. But one usual uh, approach is to color these path lines by velocities, as we are showing here. OK, so uh, with this, um, I will end this, this, this demonstration. And as we could see uh, from the results that we can get from these simulations, uh, we can reduce the preferential wear on each side of the conveyor um, and on the chute as well. We can see um, how can we reduce the chances of chute clogging. We can find the ideal operating conditions for higher efficiency, like change the mass, the mass flow rate or change the belt velocity. We can evaluate how much, uh, how much mass do we have uh, inside the chute. Uh, we can predict forces on the geometries, which might lead to failures as well. We can see how the material flows inside the chute uh, and see uh, how uh, this flow can be causing um, an imbalance on the receiving conveyor. And we can do much more. OK, so this uh, was the first session for this Rocky in Action series. Uh, we will have other sessions according to what we have here. So we will show other applications for mixing, separators, bucket elevators, mills, and others. And uh, we would like to invite you to attend these other next sessions. Please feel free to contact us uh, through our social media or through our website if you have any questions. Thank you for watching. I see you next time. We do uh, have a few questions here. So the first question is uh, someone asking if we can get the CAD files out of the simulation. Yes, we can get the CAD files uh, out of the simulation. So if you want to export this CAD uh, drawings to other software, this is possible. Uh, you can also export the particles, um, geometries, 
as a CAD file. So all that is possible. Okay, but usually what we do is uh, we use STL files uh, as the preferred format for working with Rocky. We have another question here. Uh, someone is asking if we can also input various types and particle size distributions. Yes, we can mix uh, different types of particles with different shapes. We can have different particle size distributions. Uh, each particle type can have its own material, its own density, so there are no limitations with regards to the types of particles that we want to use in a simulation. Another question is about the compatibility with ANSYS. Uh, if our compatibility with ANSYS is better, the answer is yes. We are completely integrated with ANSYS software, so we can run coupled simulations between uh, DM and CFD solver uh, like Fluent, uh, and we can do a couple simulation between DEM and FEA uh, solver from ANSYS. So all this uh, is directly uh, integrated and uh, easy to use. We can uh, do couple simulations with other software, but this require extra steps as we need to write files in the right format so that this other software uh, is able to read. So the question is, is with, regard, with regards to Abacus, we would need to write a file that Abacus can read, but should be possible. What format can the program take for shoot designs? Can it take STP or IFC? Well. Uh, the preferred format is STL, so as I said, uh, we, we can import uh, STL files into Rocky and Rocky accepts other uh, formats as well, but it does not, uh, Rocky is not able to read STP uh, step files or IFC. Uh, we would need to do a conversion uh, using a CAD software, but most CAD softwares uh, or if not all CAD softwares are able to save geometry files as STL. So it's a very generic uh, file uh, format and we can um, use it as our format in our simulations. Another question is with regards to the size distribution curve. Yes, we can get the size distribution curve um, on the in, on the input, so when on on the feed and on the discharge as well. So if the size distribution is different between the feed and the discharge, we can see these differences. We can um, input particles using size distribution. So all that can be done uh, as well. Another question uh, is how about breakage, agglomeration, and deposition? Is the software able to simulate this phenomena? Yes. So um, we can um, do particle breakage uh, with Rocky. We have different breakage models. Uh, we, so we can have instant fragmentation and um, the uh, and other fragmentation models as well, the discrete breakage. Uh, most commonly we use instant fragmentation models for simulations where we have we want to use breakage. With regards to agglomeration, we can use uh, adhesion models, which will include attraction, attractive forces between particles or between particles and geometries. So if you have wet material, sticky material, we can simulate that by using adhesion models. And the position, uh, yes, the deposition will be a result of the uh, operating conditions of your process, but yes, we can capture the material deposition uh, on the inside the chute, as, as I showed, uh, or we can see the deposition uh, in, in other equipment as well. Can we also simulate physics such as secondary breakup of particles? Yes, so that's uh, pretty much what I just mentioned. Um, 
we can have particle breakage and we have different breakage models that allow for uh, breakup of particles. And the good thing about these breakage models is that we use the real uh, particle shapes. So when particles are broken up, uh, we, uh, we can preserve volume and mass of these fragments. So that's different from most DEM codes, most DEM commercial codes, because uh, they use the glued spheres approach and with that they cannot preserve mass and volume of particles. And that doesn't happen with Rocky, we have a more realistic model. Okay, I think we don't have any other questions. Uh, again, thank you all for watching. If you have other questions, please feel free to contact us through our uh, social media or our website. Thank you all. Bye.